They say you should never kiss and tell. But apparently nobody told that to Winona Ryder's exes. So what do we know about the star's past relationships? According to some reports, Charlie Sheen was the first of many celebrities to date Winona Ryder. The pair allegedly struck up a connection after appearing alongside each other in the 1,986 rom-com Lucas. And although neither party has ever officially confirmed the rumors, Sheen has made a rather bold claim about their time together on set in 2012. The Two and a Half Men star told Center Stage that he was responsible for coining Ryder's stage name. Sheen recalled, we were listening to the doors. There are two Storm Riders. The true Winona is Horowitz. I then remarked, you know, Winona Ryder sounds kind of cool. She said, oh yeah. Sheen further said that his former co-star never thanked him for his alleged epiphany. When Winona Ryder and Christian Slater starred as a pair of violent, infatuated teenagers in the great high school comedy Heathers in 1989, they solidified Winona Ryder's reputation as being hotter than cool. It turns out that the on-screen relationship between the actors also existed in real life, albeit without the murder. Ryder acknowledged growing close to her co-star in an interview with Entertainment Weekly for a cult classic oral history project. She claimed that nothing occurred prior to the movie. I do recall making out with him a couple times after that. He gained power. Power opined that you didn't. Ryder also mentioned that they attempted to advance their relationship. It's unfortunate that drama always seems to get in the way. In the same article, Slater claimed that throughout filming, he was so preoccupied with getting to know Ryder that he hardly paid attention to his other co-stars. He continued, I definitely love her today. That was a special period for both of us, and she is a fantastic performer. The four years Winona Ryder and her co-star in the movie Edward Scissorhands, Johnny Depp, were together are without a doubt her most well-known relationship. At the Great Balls of Fire premiere in 1989, the couple first connected, and a year later they made an engagement announcement. Sadly, love's childhood ideal did not succeed in becoming a reality. Goodbye. When the two parted ways in 1993, Depp was probably left cursing the day he had Winona forever tattooed on his bicep. Later, it was reported by their mutual friend Tim Burton that the heartthrob had admitted who was to blame for the breakup. I asked him why it occurred since I felt so horrible, but all he responded was that it wasn't her fault, he told the Los Angeles Times. I owned it. Depp, though, seemed to attribute the separation to the rigors of celebrity in an interview with the same publication. He claimed that leading a private life in this place is really challenging. It was a mistake for me to be so open about my connection with Winona, but I reasoned that if we were honest, the curiosity monster wouldn't exist. Rather, it ate. People were given permission to believe they were a part of it. However, they continued to be friends, and in 2022, Ryder openly backed her ex in a libel lawsuit he was involved in against his ex-girlfriend, Amber Heard. The relationship between Winona Ryder and Dave Pirner, the lead singer of runaway train alt-rock band Soul Asylum, was one of her most committed ones. After allegedly meeting during an MTV Unplugged session where Pirner was singing, the couple dated from 1994 to 1996. Similar to many of the musicians Ryder has dated. Evidently, Pernar decided to compose a song about her. It was similar to anyone in this instance. An album from 1995. Shine your dim light, please. The final separation between Pernar and Ryder seems to have been friendly. The Chicago Sun-Times questioned Pernar in 2001, the same year Ryder was famously detained and accused of stealing, on whether his ex-girlfriend should be let go or imprisoned. She's not a criminal, he retorted. I only have positive things to say about her. It's safe to assume that Winona Ryder previously looked up to the replacements Paul Westerberg, their vocalist. When asked about the artist in 1990, the actor said, if I were to have a hero or a personal god, it would be him. She also added, if I were to cry whenever I think of the musician. In Heathers, which takes place in a fictitious high school named after Westerberg at Ryder's insistence, you may see further signs of her fandom. So when the actor started dating the guy of her dreams, it's likely that she had to pinch herself. Unfortunately, Ryder didn't seem to leave the same sort of an effect on Westerberg when he was questioned by Esgate in 2002 whether his most devoted and well-known fan had ever taken anything from him, 
a year after Ryder was busted for theft. My time, the singer merely stated. The two-year relationship between Winona Ryder and Matt Damon was initially made public at a pre-Academy Awards party hosted by the now-exonerated film magnate Harvey Weinstein. But unlike his former marriage to Minnie Driver, which he memorably terminated on Oprah, Damon's current union. Their breakup was amicable to the core. Damon revealed to Playboy in 2004 that it ended for far more mundane reasons than, for example, a wild orgy at the Four Seasons, when my feelings were crushed because Richard Guerra was overly enamored of her. Oh, I like him. In the midst of Ryder's shoplifting escapade, Damon also stood up for her, saying when the media was attacking her. It seemed to me that it would soon be over, that she would eventually overcome it since she is a terrific lady and that her real colors will eventually show. However, the actor's breakup with Ryder did significantly affect his love life. I don't think I could fall in love with a celebrity right now, he said, since it would require me to alter my way of life. And I appreciate that most of the time, my way of life seems natural to me. Damon kept his promise when he wed Luciana Barroso in 2005, an Argentinian lady he had met while she was a bartender. The lead singer of the loud folk band Old 97 Seconds, Rhett Miller, and Winona Ryder only went on one date. The singer later dedicated an entire song to the night in question, called after the way Phoebe Caulfield is described by her brother Holden in J. D. Salinger's classic novel The Catcher in the Rye. She must have left quite the impact during their encounter in 2000 because the song is named after the way Phoebe Caulfield is portrayed by her brother in The Catcher in the Rye. Satellite Rides, the band's fifth studio album from 2001, contains the song Roller Skate Skinny. Miller and Ryder appear to have enjoyed their date, according to almost half of the song's lyrics, however. When he married Luciana Barroso, an Argentinian woman he had met while she worked as a bartender in 2005, Damon fulfilled his vow. Rhett Miller, the main singer of the boisterous folk group Old 97 Seconds, and Winona Ryder only went out on one date. Later, the artist devoted an entire song to the incident, with the title taken from the way Phoebe Caulfield is described by her brother Holden in the timeless novel The Catcher in the Rye by J. D. Salinger. The song is titled after the way Phoebe Caulfield is represented by her brother in The Catcher in the Rye, thus she must have made quite an impression on him during their encounter in 2000. The song Roller Skate Skinny is from the band's fifth studio album, Satellite Rides, which was released in 2001. Miller. According to roughly half of the song's lyrics, and Ryder seemed to have liked their date. However, they quickly recognized that the moment wasn't right and parted ways. So I think we're married under the eyes of God, Reeves remarked in an interview with Esquire. The A-lister's friendship has, of course, never been anything but platonic. Actually been connected as a pair. However, if you accept the couple's account of their time spent filming Dracula in 1992, they were once legally wed. No. Yes. 2018's Destination Wedding had two stars who consistently said that genuine priests performed the Dracula scene in which their characters went down the aisle. So I think we're married under the eyes of God, Reeves remarked in an interview with Esquire. The A-lister's friendship has, of course, never been anything but platonic. 